Reef Dudes is sponsored by Ecotech Marine and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're talking about saltwater aquarium fish. What's going on guys? Devin from Reef Dudes. So today we are digging into saltwater fish and kind of my experience with all the fish that I keep. Now starting out with the tang gang, I do have three yellow tangs. Now two of them were together in a prior tank, one of them was new and they were added at the same time. And I'm going to say 95% of the time they get along great, they're just a happy trio, but there is a bit of aggression once in a while. You can see the one guy's fins are a little more tattered than the others. So tangs do have a certain kind of order of dominance that happens. And for the most part, if you feed heavy, it's very minimal, but it does occur once in a while. Now, overall, they're pretty good. They're amazing LG feeders. And, you know, having one in your tank is going to keep things looking good. Next up, we have the blue throat trigger. Now, out of all the trigger fish, the blue throat's probably your most reef safe of the trigger fish. Um, I've never really seen him eat any of my like, LPS or my SPS or anything else. Uh, the one exception is I did used to have a big squamosa clam out of the tank, and at one point, I did wake up one morning to a bunch of fish pecking at it, including him, not to say that he was a culprit, but it is definitely plausible. But aside from that, I can say I've had great experience with the blue throat trigger fish. Now up on my favorite list would probably be the copper band butterfly. They're absolutely gorgeous fish. Um, this, their body shape, the patterns on them is like nothing else. And if you have any adaptation in your tank, these guys are ferocious hunters. They will hunt it down and basically clear out the problem for you. I, it's a struggle to find any adaptation in my tank anywhere. And this guy does a fabulous job of keeping the tank looking awesome. Now for splash of color, we have a Azure Damsel. Now these guys have a decent amount of personality. They tend to be one of the less aggressive of the damselfish. Um, in general, I would say I haven't really had any issues with this one. That being said, I have had one in the past that was a little aggressive over his territory. He would come out and try and nip you. Um, but aside from that, every other one I've kept has been pretty peaceful overall. And in my office tank, there's another one I actually have called the Talbot Damsel, and that one's been very docile as well. He's been nice coloration, and again, he's been a really peaceful damselfish for me. Now, one of his little tank mate buddies is the Purple Stripe Dobby Back. Um, these guys are said to be aggressive. I have not yet experienced this. Um, that being said, they're in a pretty long tank, so he does have his own territory, and that may play into it. Now I do have a mix with another dotty back, and that's the orchid dotty back. Now this one's supposed to be a little less aggressive. I mean, I would say they're fairly equal. This guy kind of sticks to his own corner, and he has the odd little chase of fish away. But for the most part, I haven't really seen anything overly aggressive. So so far, so good with the pair of these two in the same tank. And of course, you have to have a chromis in your tank. Chromis, blue green chromis. They're just a very iconic free fish. They're hardy, they're nice and easy. Um, I have one in each tank. That does that bluey green shimmery color always looks awesome. Now one thing I do like is I do like to live in certain acros. So you know, it's a bigger colony here and he likes to hide underneath the base of it a lot of the time, which I think is kind of a cool little relationship. Next up we have the Coral Beauty, which is the Dorth Angelfish. Um, it is one of those reef safe with cautions. It can nip at acros or certain things. I mean, they are known to eat sponges. Overall, I'd say it's a, one of the easier Dorth Angelfish. And yeah, I haven't had it really cause any issue with any of my corals, but again, could always be luck of the draw on that one. Another one on my favorite list would have to be the Mandarin Dragonette. Um, I just really love the colors of these guys. They're super graceful. They pretty much just cruise around all day and hunt pods. So if you have a large tank, they're extremely easy. If you are going to get one though, I would advise trying to find one that does eat frozen mysa shrimp just because it makes your job much, much easier, um, especially in a newer tank that may not be established in full of pods yet. Next up, we have a pretty unique reef fish, and this one's actually a yellow line snapper. Now, under the blues, this guy fluoresces like he absolutely glows it really is a beautiful fish uh, the only one kind of downside is they can grow pretty big up to about 10 inches so there's might be a point in time when he eventually outgrows my tank until then i might find a new home but for now he's definitely a gorgeous fish and something you don't see every day which i think is super cool this guy is a leopard wrasse. He's a super beautiful fish. Uh, this is a male. Uh, the females are more black and white with a bit of a reddy orange kind of trim around it, uh, where the male is more colorful. Super duper cool fish. These ones are considered more of an expert wrasse, and that's mainly just because they are more sensitive at first. I find once they're acclimated in your tank, they're very easy, very hardy fish, but if you, they don't necessarily ship the best, and they don't acclimate very well, so they can be a little more sensitive from that respect. Uh, next up, we have the red-headed wrasse. This guy is definitely unique. You don't see him very often in the hobby. Um, 
the redhead obviously gives it its name and it has a striking very vibrant almost like fluorescent reflective kind of blue trim around it super duper cool fish i've got this guy for a tank shut down years ago and he's been just super easy just beautiful easy fish and he's you know he's unique because he's not something that i've really ever seen outside of my tank so pretty cool one if you're after a pest hunter, the Melanaris does a fantastic job. They're also extremely hardy. I've had this Melanaris for many, many, many years since he was just a little baby and he's been through many, many tank upgrades. Um, definitely very hardy and a fantastic pest hunter. Uh, the only complaint I'd say is as he gets bigger, he definitely is a little more aggressive on the pest hunting side. Um, if you have small frags, you know, I've been in there and seen him flip them over to get to the bottom and try and get to any pods or any little creatures that might be hiding underneath. But aside from that, he's been a pretty awesome ras. And of course, clownfish. You can't forget these. They're probably the most iconic saltwater fish out there. Extremely easy, extremely hardy. You know, in general, they're pretty happy, bubbly. Uh, the nice thing is they can be in a smaller tank, a larger tank. They generally stick to one area of the tank. If there's an enemy, you know, they'll tend to host it, they'll tend to feed it. If you get two of them, they will pair up over time. Generally, they will start out as males and the more dominant one will turn into the female. He may see a little bit of bickering, but after that they do tend to pair up and very easy, very hardy and kind of iconic fish. This beauty is the purple tang. Now, in general, if you have a bunch of different supersomas mixed, like the yellow tangs, purple tangs, there definitely can be some aggression. I'm gonna say overall they're pretty good, but there is the odd little bits of dominance here and there. And now the bigger tank is, the more success you're gonna have. I wouldn't do this in a smaller tank. You wanna have at least a six foot tank if you're, you know, mixing multiple tangs. So food for thought, but overall this guy is definitely a beauty. My largest two tangs would be the hippo tang and the red sea sylvan tang. Now the hippo tang, it arguably gets a little bit too big for most aquariums. Um, they're awesome little fish, you know, everyone knows Dory, but as they get bigger, they tend to move frags around and stuff. So keep that in mind. I've also heard of them eating zoas. Uh, the red sea sylvan tang, he has been pretty pretty good tang he's probably actually my oldest fish in this tank i didn't hear it him about three or four years ago when he was 12 or 13 years at the time so he's definitely one of the the older tangs in the tank and surprisingly docile compared to most other tanks um he does have one eye that's a little bit funky on him kind of how i got him years ago but he'll come up and almost let you pet him so like he's a he's a pretty chill tank this little gem's a royal gamma. Now these guys, awesome personalities, they're really peaceful. This guy actually lives inside of my Zoa little island, Peninsula Rock there. Um, very docile, very friendly fish. I haven't really seen any aggression towards him anyone else. I've had this guy since a teeny weeny little baby. And it's just stunning coloration, fading from that purple to gold. So definitely a winner for most size reef tanks. These awesome underrated guys are flame hawkfish. Super curious little fish. They're actually kind of hard to film because they're constantly hiding in the corals and my tank's fairly densely grown out so it's really hard to get a good angle on them to actually shoot them through the glass. But they're super duper curious fish. They kind of get spooked easily but at the same time they're always like poking out like hiding through the cracks watching you so they're super hilarious. Tons of personality. The only one thing to note is they will most definitely eat your crustaceans, your shrimp. So if you do have shrimp in your tank they will probably disappear if you have these guys. But if you don't have them then they're awesome personalities to add to your tank. If you're looking for some more open water swimmers, Anthias are always a great choice. Uh, they're very active fish and they're all over the tank. Um, this guy, he's always super bubbly, always out checking me out by the glass. And it's kind of funny actually, if he wants to go hide out and chill for a while, he perches down on the Monty down below under the rock. But very cool fish, very friendly. Now they're very active, so they do need lots of food, so keep that in mind. So auto feeder is always a good idea with Anthias. But otherwise, they're pretty easy fish as long as they have lots of food. Now that wasn't quite a conclusive list, but that was a good chunk of the fish in my reef tanks. I'll probably make a part two at some point and dig in some of the other fishies, or if you guys have any special quests of anything you want me to deep dive into, let me know in the comments below and I will dive into them further. Alright guys, hopefully you enjoyed this, hopefully you learned something. If you did, as always, hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.